こんにちは、岡田先生です。今日は参加の文法を勉強しましょう。文法ノートに書いてください。So, 最初に時間の勉強をします。Now, all of this is 復習。We've gone over this before, but I'm going to go more into detail for this unit. 最初に前。と後がありますね。前は before、後は after。So we know that with time, we usually put it at the beginning of a sentence. So that shouldn't be、um, very difficult for you to remember. So when something happens before something or have something happens after it, these are the forms that you would use. 前に使うときには辞書フォームを使います。We always use the non past. Why? Because it's something that、um, you do. Before something. So obviously it's a future thing, right? So, jisho form ver mae ni. Usually wouldn't use nai form because you're not going to say before I don't do something. That's silly. So, we're going to have jisho form ver ni, mae ni, or now no mae ni, or sono mae ni. Now, the ni is technically.、Um, Not something that you will use every time or you will see every time,、um, but it is a particle that you should or could use. So, <clears throat> example of that would be rainy n a n d a k e If you were to do before I go to bed, I take a bath, neru mae ni o f u r o ni h a i r i m a s or Before、um, bedtime, neru jikan no mae ni, or sono mae ni, before then, is when we will use mae ni. Ato de is going to be after. So, since it's something that happens after something, it's something that's already happened, and then after that is when you're going to do something. So, you are going to use the past tense. So, the past tense poem is ta. So, ta form koto ato de. So, in that case, you might say,、um, after I eat, I will brush my teeth. So, Tabeta ato de ha o migakimas. Or after I do my homework, I will watch TV. Ano, shukudai wo shita ato de telebi wo mimas. And then now no ato de would be like after the party. Party no ato de, or kono ato de, after this right now. Um, the difference between ato de and something that we talked about, and I'll talk about more deeply next with te kara. Te kara is, remember, is the same as te form, sequence of events, things that are happening. The reason that we use ato de is something that happens not immediately after. If it's something that happens immediately after, you're going to use the te form. We've, we've talked about this in the whole H U verb. I'm sorry, Nihongo ni、um, verb te, verb te, verb sequence of events. With ato de, it's going to be about something that happens after, but it's not always something that happens immediately after. So if it's something that happens immediately after the event that you're talking about, you're going to use the next form. And also, <clears throat> if the main clause expresses something beyond the control of the speaker, then obviously you're also going to use te kara because, again, most likely going to happen right after. So, the ta ato de can't be something that you use. The ato de is not something you can use <clears throat> when you are talking about a change of state that is occurring instantaneously, immediately after an event. So, which brings us to the sequence of events. Now, we have talked about sequence of events. Remember the te form? We've talked about this in the beginning of Nihongo ni. When you're talking about things that happen, so we would put string a bunch of verbs together with the te form. So, rei ni, ano, ano, shabete, tomodachi to shabete, keiki wo tabete, ano,、uh, presento wo akete, それから、うーんと、うちに帰ります。
So a sequence of events, you would just string together the verbs with te, right? Um, te kara makes it a lot more specific. This is the order that I did it in. So for example, if I have a bunch of verbs, a bunch of things I'm going to do today, I'm going to read a book, I'm going to sing a song, I'm going to sit in a chair, and um, I'm going to eat a cake. Um, I had something else, but anyway, but if I was stringing together those verbs, I would just use the te form. Now, if I was talking about a specific order of events, right? It is, and I'm emphasizing that sequence. I'm going to do this first and then this, and then this, and then this, then I'm going to use the te kara form. So that might be like saying, um, uh, hon wo yonde kara uta o So I'm going to read a book first and then I'm going to sing a song, right? So if that's the case, you're going to use the te kara. If the sequence doesn't matter, then you're going to use the te form in order to bind those, um, those uh, words to the verbs together. Do not use aru and iru just like with the te form. You can't use aru and iru because aru and iru wa ano, uh, state of being and you can't be a state of being before you do something else because you are just to be. Anyway, so just keep in mind, you can't use aru and iru for te form. Um, we've talked about that before, but I wanted to emphasize that for the te kara. And, um, and also, you're only verbally going to hear this. It's not going to be on the slide because it is in next unit's notes. But I do want you to keep, my, keep in mind that there is a more formal form of this. And you might actually see it and you've heard me say it and you've seen it actually. Is that when you see sequence of events, you see te and te kara, but you might see it with just the stem form. And that's much more formal way of saying a sequence of events. So again, if you had the sequence of events of like reading a book and then uh, singing a song, um, you might see it with the stem form. So for example, in that case, you don't see a te form, you don't see te kara, you only see the stem form that connects the two verbs together, and that is okay. That is a much more formal way. You'll most likely see that more in writing rather than a verbal form. And you probably wouldn't use it when you're speaking, again, but you might see it in writing. And that, again, is um, sequencing of events as well. Now, Things that might happen, again, when we're talking about time, sometimes things don't happen before and after, but it happens concurrently. It happens at the same time. So um, when we say things that are concurrent or simultaneous, simultaneous and concurrent are two different things. We already know that, right? Simultaneous means that it happens right at that same moment versus concurrently means in the span of a certain time, things can happen at the same time. It's, it's a slight difference in English. But anyway, to do two actions concurrently, we use stem form nagara or um, te iru aidani. Usually te iru form, but it's a plain form aidani. Um, you can use a jiu form or the nai form as well. But um, the concurrent actions that you use here, the difference between the two, because both of them means while. In English, it would be translated as while. But nagara would mean that one person is doing two actions concurrently, while aida would be two people doing two separate actions, but they're doing it at the same time, so concurrently. So you're saying they're doing it at the same space or span of time. So, for example, reini, sensei wa shaberi nagara kaiteimasu. So while I am speaking right now, I'm taking notes and I'm writing them down. Shaberi nagara, sensei wa shaberi nagara kaiteimasu. De minasan wa sensei wo kiki nagara noto wo kaiteimasu ne. Now, 
when there are two people doing the same, um, during the same span of time or doing two separate actions, you're going to use aidani. So in that case, sensei ga shabetteiru, shabetteiru aidani, minasan wa noto wo totteimasu. Again, I'm going to go back. So before you were listening to sensei while taking notes. So you are the one person doing the two actions, listening and taking notes. So that would be sensei wo kiki nagara noto wo totteimasu. Now, on the other hand, when we have two people doing two actions concurrently, so sensei is speaking and you are writing or taking notes, that would be Sensei ga shabette iru aida ni anata wa noto wo totte imasu. Let's do some other examples. So again, uh, maybe you listen to music while you run and that's done concurrently or simultaneously. I, I, you might be able to do that, but you might be doing it concurrently. You might say, ongaku wo kiki nagara hashirimasu or hashiri nagara Ongaku wo kikimasu. Really depends on what you're focusing on. And then you could say, Watashi ga benkyo wo shite iru aida ni haha wa ano, ryori wo shite imasu. Chichi wa to hon wo yonde imasu. Watashi ga terebi wo mite iru aida ni ano, tomodachi wa kami wo otte imasu. Maybe they're doing origami. So it's the same action, but they're doing it separately. It's not like we're writing one essay together, like physically writing with one pencil. That would be strange. But we're both writing an essay, but it's concurrently happening at the same time span. So in that case, we would say, Watashi ga sakubun wo kaite iru aida ni tomodachi mo sakubun wo kaite imasu. All right. Next one, we have uwasa ni yoruto. Uwasa ni yoruto, uwasa are rumors, right? Um, it could be rumors or it doesn't have to be. It actually could be some secondhand voice or source. So I have X ni yoruto. So I heard this thing from someone, right? So uwasa ni yoruto would be like according to rumors. But if I know specifically where the source came from, maybe it was Amelia. I might say Amelia ni yoruto. And then I have to say what that rumor is, or this one thing that I heard, or I understood it as, or something that's said. I'm going to say, uh, uwasa ni yoruto, and then something sold us, and then plain form sold us. So I'm going to say the whole entire phrase, or so whole entire sentence, and it with plain form sold us. So what did I hear lately? So I might have heard a rumor that someone bought um new pair of pants so i might say uh tomodachi ni yoruto kanojo wa atarashi zubon wo katta sou desu she bought a new pair of pants or maybe i heard that this person is going to japan kare ni yoruto cuz i heard it from him kare ni yoruto kanojo wa nihon ni iku sou desu now, this has to be remembered not to be confused with what we learned last year with the soul desu that we used for before. In that case, we use the, remember the keioshi minus e or just plain keioshi plus soul desu and then stem form soul desu. And that was looks like, or um, looks like they're about to remember if we say, uh, no, 
kantan soldes. It seems to be easy, right? Or mijikai soldes. Or mijika soldes. Sorry, mijika soldes. It looks short. Um, and then stem form hashiri soldes. He looks like he's about to run. Now, in this case, you have to make sure that if you just hear it or see it in plain form, so hashiru soldes, heard that they are going to run, versus hashiri soldes, they look like they're about to run. Kantan soldes, it looks easy. Kantan da soldes, I heard that it's easy. Mijika soldes, it looks easy. Short, mijikai so des. I heard that it's short. So keep those two in mind. There is a difference between the two. All right. So speaking of、um, looks, we have woshteimas, and this is used in order to describe what someone looks like. So, this is again a descriptor of a person. And in this case, you are going to be focusing on a body part, which is awkward to say, but it is description of a part of body using wo steimas instead of using ga arimas. So, instead of saying kanojo wa oki me ga arimas, instead of saying that, We would say, Kanojo wa oki me wo steimas. Kare wa chisai me wo steimas. Kanojo wa nagai kami no ke wo steimas. Versus nagai kami no ke ga arimas. Kare wa mijikai kami no ke wo steimas. Kare wa. Well, actually, we don't know which one's which. So we can say, Kare kanojo wa ano, akai kuchibiru wo steimas. Kare wa nagai ashi ga arimas. Kare wa midori no kami no ke wo steimas. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when we're describing someone, we are going to use keoshi plus、um, karada part and then wo steimas. Pretty kantan, I think. This is just all to use for、um, descriptors. And remember not to be confused with profession wo steimas from unit ichi. Ichi ka no bun no to that you took notes on、um, profession wo steimas. So, haisha wo steimas. He's a doctor. Again, it's a descriptor. And then finally, we have a little bit of an informal speaking style notes here. So, これは全部しゃべるときに使います。書くときには絶対にこれを使わないようにしてください。Only when they're speaking and it, only if you're doing informal speaking.、Um, when you are reading it or you are writing it,、um, you will not see it as this way when you're reading it unless you're reading someone's conversation. And、um, you should not be using this in any of your writing. Again, it's only when you're doing informal speaking, but I am bringing it up so that you do know what it is when you、um, come across it when you're listening to it. Totemo, totemo, kono keki, oishi ne, tsukute krete, arigato. We can say, kono keki, totemo oishi. Um, we have amari becomes anmari. We could say,、mm, amari shukudai wo shitaku nai na. Instead of saying amari. Sugoku, instead of sugoku, we can say like, kono uta sugoku yoku nai. And then wa, you're going to see it as she said to te frequently、um, in、uh, informal speaking. You might say things like, if the sentence is, tomodachi no inu wa kawaii desu. Informal speaking, you might hear it as tomodachi no inu te kawaii ne, or tomodachi no inu te totemo kawaii ne, tomodachi no inu wa sukoku kawaii ne. Like you're, you're gonna see it in different forms, 
but just know that that chisaitsu, that mm, it's not that it's a spelling mistake. It's just a more informal way of speaking. Again, shitsumo nattara, chanto sensei wo kiku yoni, sensei ni kiku yoni shite kudasai. 